Hi everyone, it's Emma, and today I'm doing my Q&A for 10,000 subscribers. I went to Instagram and Twitter and asked you guys to send me some questions. I made this pretty setup for you all, and I am loving it. Look, I matched my hair clips to the sunflowers. I've got my little Van Gogh mug. Actually, I think this is a Monet mug. And I'm just going to chat with you guys while I drink some tea. If you could host a dinner party with eight guests, not including yourself, who would you invite? No fictional characters. I picked Lisa Eldridge, the makeup artist who has a YouTube channel and taught me literally everything I know about makeup because I just would love to talk about makeup with her and she's also a very sweet person. Matt Smith, who played the 11th Doctor because he is the only person in the world that I would probably like fangirl to an extreme fangirl level, like screaming if I ever met him. Taylor Swift, obviously. Maggie Stiefvater, because favorite author. Lin-Manuel Miranda, one of the most creative people ever, and I need info on the Name of the Wind movie adaptations that he's doing the music for. Wait, what number am I on? Six. Lauren Graham, who played Lorelai in Gilmore Girls, because again, I want like behind the scenes Gilmore Girls stuff. Oh wait, wait, I need two more. I didn't write down two more. All right, I'm just gonna pick two off the top of my head. Jay Park, um, um, Conan Gray, the YouTuber. I'm not gonna stick by those, but that was my choices off the top of my head. What is the weirdest slash most annoying thing that has ever happened to you at work? I work at my local independent bookstore, and I'm always tweeting about like weird stuff that happens during the day. This isn't the most annoying thing, but it was just really funny. So one day, this guy came in, like in his 20s probably, and he was the most beautiful person I've ever seen in person. When I was checking him out at the register, he was so beautiful that when I made eye contact with him, I actually stuttered. But he was really high. He came in and there's this spinner of journals near the front. So I was behind the cash registers where I was like watching this play out. He stands there in front of the journals for like 20 minutes. I kept doing stuff and coming back and he was still there staring at the journals. He like bought a journal and left and that was all he did. Like he didn't even go back into the bookstore and he was really high. So like I'm just imagining that he was off, you know, doing whatever and was like, my thoughts right now are such pure genius that I need to go buy a journal to write them down. I thought that was really funny. Also the fact that he was just like so beautiful, but he was high. What is your favorite childhood memory? I have so many good childhood memories. My family had like a lot of traditions. So family vacations, like long drives down to Florida, Christmas morning and cuddles with my childhood dog. All of those things are really precious to me. But probably my favorite childhood memory is more like a long experience. I live by the beach and when I was a kid, my dad started this weekly event once a week during the summers kids could come out and we would teach them how to skimboard. If you don't know what skimboarding is, it's a water sport. It's pretty similar to surfing, except the board is shaped totally different. And instead of starting out in the water and coming in, you skim into the water and then ride the wave back in. We started doing this and it grew and grew and grew. And eventually there were like a hundred kids who would come out and learn to skimboard for free. We had instructors who at the time seemed a lot older, but now thinking back, they were probably in high school. And we had all of these rules, like if you fell down and got hurt, you had to get up and spit because it makes you feel better. At the end of the night, everyone would go out to dinner, all the instructors and like my whole family. And we would go to like the same restaurants. So they knew us, they knew we were the skim school crew and they would like give us discounts. The whole atmosphere was so much fun and it became such a big community thing that even now when I run into people who are around my age, like most of them went to skim school. At the end of the summer, we'd have a big party. Local like surf shops would give us free stuff to give out to everybody and we would have a video. And this went on for years. Like I grew up with this every summer. Those memories of those parties and like the instructors rapping on helium and just all kinds of crazy stuff going down. Favorite surprise of the year, i.e. could be a story or a person or situation, whatever that was positive and you still think about it. This for sure has been BookCon. I was just really nervous and like not sure how it would go. I had never been to a big book event like that. I'm still really new to booktube. I hadn't met anyone in person. 
and it played out to be such a positive experience. So many of you guys came up to me, like way more than I expected. I got to take pictures with you and have little chats and then just like meeting everyone and making friends. I still think about it like all the time. My badges from BookCon are hung on my chair, like at my desk. So I see them every day and it just kind of like makes me smile. If you could befriend any fictional character, who would it be and why? Ronin from the Raven Cycle series. Ronin, I just like want to be best friends with him. Basically, I want to be Blue because Blue and Ronin's friendship is the best. Or Blue. Blue would be a really good best friend too. Just you could like talk about feminism with her and the earth and like nature and I would love that. I also love Lara Jean from the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series. She would be the cutest best friend. Like she bakes She's so soft and sweet and like sleepovers with her would just be so much fun. Next question is, would you ever get a tattoo in the future? I would love to get a tattoo. I already know like three that I would get, but I'm not actually allowed to get tattoos for medical reasons. So the answer to that is no, I will not be getting a tattoo in the future. But if the question is, would I like having a tattoo? The answer is yes. Absolutely, I would love having tattoos. Like Grace with a book in her face, her Raven Cycle tattoos on her thigh is the coolest thing to me. I think it's amazing and I would totally do something like that. Something like really meaningful to me. But like I said, I can't get tattoos unless someone invents a way to get a tattoo that does not involve injecting metal into your body. All-time favorite poem or quote? I don't know if it's my all-time favorite, so don't like hold me to this, okay? <laughs> This quote is from The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. The only context that you need is that they are on a ship and they've sailed into this very dark island. Like everything around them is dark and they can't see anything. Lucy leant her head on the edge of the fishing top and whispered, Aslan, Aslan, if you've ever loved us at all, send us help now. The darkness did not grow any less, but she began to feel a little, a very, very little better. After all, nothing has really happened to us yet, she thought. Look, cried Rhinelf's voice hoarsely from the bows. There was a tiny speck of light ahead, and while they watched, a broad beam of light fell from it upon the ship. It did not alter the surrounding darkness, but the whole ship was lit up as if by a searchlight. Caspian blinked, started round, saw the faces of his companions, all with wild, fixed expressions. Everyone was staring in the same direction, Behind everyone lay his black, sharply edged shadow. Lucy looked along the beam and presently saw something at it. At first it looked like a cross, then it looked like an aeroplane, then it looked like a kite, and at last, with a whirring of wings, it was right overhead and was an albatross. It circled three times round the mast and then perched for an instant on the crest of the gilded dragon at the prow. It called out in a strong, sweet voice what seemed to be words, though no one understood them. After that, it spread its wings, rose, and began to fly slowly ahead, bearing a little to starboard. Drinian steered after it, not doubting that it offered good guidance. But no one except Lucy knew that as it circled the mast, it had whispered to her, Courage, dear heart. And the voice she felt sure was Aslan's, and with the voice a delicious smell breathed in her face. In a few moments, the darkness turned into a grayness ahead, and then, almost before they dared to begin hoping, they had shot out into the sunlight and were in the warm blue world again. All at once, everybody realized that there was nothing to be afraid of and never had been. They blinked their eyes and looked about them. The brightness of the ship herself astonished them. They had half expected to find the darkness would cling to the white and the green and the gold in the form of some grime or scum. And then first one and then another began laughing. That picture of being surrounded by darkness and not able to tell where you are not having a clue what to do, realizing that nothing can really hurt you and you were safe all along and what is most dangerous is your own fear, has been something that I've clung to through many times in my life. Can you talk a little bit about being homeschooled? So, I was homeschooled from fifth grade through high school. My, like, middle school years were probably pretty typical as to what you think of homeschooling, like, I did school on my own, I would do school in my PJs, I would double up on some days and then skip school for other days. <laughs> first time I read the Percy Jackson series, I skipped school 
to read like the first three books. But my high school homeschooling experience was pretty different. I took online classes with a classical school. Basically, I had a teacher and I had classmates. They just lived all over the world. Instead of like seeing them in person, we would Skype into a classroom. The schooling was really, really intense. If you know anything about classical education, we read all of the classics, like my freshman year in high school, I read like Herodotus and Gilgamesh and that kind of stuff. And then we would discuss it in class in a Socratic manner. That type of learning is a huge reason, one, why I love reading, two, why I want to be a writer. I don't think I would be the person I was today if I hadn't had that amazing, incredible experience. I loved homeschooling so much. For me, I always had a mix of friends who like went to school and friends who didn't. Like my best friend always went to school. We never attended school together except for like preschool. <laughs> but a lot of my friends, like in middle school, one of my friends, she lived in the neighborhood across from mine. We would like do homeschooling together because she was also homeschooled. She had a brother who was my brother's age. My brother Will was homeschooled. The whole time I was homeschooled, he was actually homeschooled for longer than me. And then my brother Peyton was only homeschooled the last two years of high school. I had my brothers and I had friends who were homeschooled, so for me it was not socially restrictive at all. I actually think it was really beneficial because I got to grow up without the like high school drama or middle school drama. It was an incredible experience and I think it made me who I am today. What book has been most influential in your life? I got this question in like multiple forms. And my answer is actually going to be the Chronicles of Narnia series. My parents read me some of the books when I was a little kid, so it was one of my first introductions to like that type of writing. And then, when I was a freshman in high school, in the homeschooling that I just talked about, in my secondary literature class, we studied all of the Narnia books, and it was incredible. I like changed my life and the way that I read. And now I've reread it as an adult. Every single time it impacts me in a new way and it just has pushed my, I don't know, personal life forward. I feel like if I ever need a pick-me-up, I did this last Christmas, I needed a pick-me-up and so I read the Narnia series and it just like brings me a sense of calm and peace and nostalgia. I think it will forever be a favorite of mine. I know it will forever be a favorite of mine. What's your favorite Harry Potter book and how old are you and what's your lock screen? My favorite Harry Potter book is Deathly Hallows. I am 19 years old. I got that question many, many times. But yeah, I'm 19. People usually think I'm a lot older than I am, but I'm still a baby. My lock screen at the moment is this picture from Pinterest. On my screen, it just shows as saying to create, but um, the full picture actually says created to create. And then my like phone background is this picture of me Noah. Mino, I don't remember how to say his name in correct Korean pronunciation, from Winner. He's amazing, by the way. I love his solo stuff, but he has all of these like really aesthetic pictures that are just perfect for phone backgrounds. Do you speak slash understand Korean? I'm surprised by how often I get this question. The answer is no, I'm not fluent in Korean. I think the reason that it maybe comes across that I know Korean is because the karate form that I took growing up was a Korean form. It's called Tangsudo Murakwan. I grew up hearing Korean words and speaking Korean words because all of our like commands were in Korean. We counted in Korean. I called my master Sabanim. When you start a fight, you say Shisha. And also when you become a black belt, you have to study a little bit more in depth in the Korean. So like every day when I would go into the dojang, when you bow to people, you say Kamap Samnida, which means thank you in Korean. So like when I got into K-pop and K-drama and stuff, I already recognized a lot of the words. I already knew how to like count to 20 in Korean and stuff, but I have no understanding of the language as far as like speaking it and grammar and construction and all of that. But it is the language I would most like to learn because of karate, it always kind of had a place in my life. And because some of my family members are Korean, my cousins and my aunt are Korean, so I've always had like this context for it. Why are you into BTS? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Brandon meant this as a joke, but I'm gonna take it seriously and answer it because I have real reasons for liking BTS. 
I also got asked, like, how did I get into K-pop and how did I get into BTS? So I'm just gonna make that all one question. So I got into it for the dancing because I was a dancer growing up and I saw these, like, boy band members dancing but I was like these guys obviously have classical training at least Jimin and J-Hope do and that impressed me so much like I was watching Jimin dance and I was like this boy took ballet I know it you can tell just by the way he stands when he's like standing still but the reason that I love BTS so much is mostly because of their lyrics and the messages that they put forth and just their whole energy they're such positive people the way that the lyrics translate it translates into like simple reminder truths that I need every day like so there's this one song called tomorrow which I forget which album it's on it might be school love affair this is a little bit of the lyrics it says because the dawn right before the sun rises is the darkest even in the far future never forget the you of right now wherever you are right now you're just taking a breath don't give up tomorrow keep walking we're too young to stop tomorrow open the door we see too much shut the door when the dark night passes a bright morning will come when tomorrow comes the bright light will shine so don't worry this isn't a stop but just a pause in your life for a break turn up your thumbs and press play so everyone can see the way that it translates into like those reminders that i need like this isn't a stop in your life things will move forward tomorrow will be new follow your dreams like that kind of stuff that you can't say it in English, it doesn't sound right. That's why I love BTS because everything that they put forward, all of their concepts and the ideas that they stand for are things that are really important to me. Even their upbeat songs, like the Cypher songs, and they'll just be yelling over and over again, I love, I love, I love myself, I love, I love, I love myself, I know, I know, I know myself. Or like 21st Century Girl, they say something like, say you're strong, you know you're strong. And they're talking about 21st century girls who like get flack and are independent. And that's just the most amazing thing to me. That's why I love BTS, Brandon. Why don't you love BTS? A similar question that I got a bunch of times was, did you go to college? No, I have not attended college. I don't have a college degree. I experienced a lot of health issues in high school that were very complicated. At the time that I graduated high school, I wasn't healthy enough to go away to college or to do online school in any way, so I took some time off, and now it's been like two years. I've been focusing on other things, like I started my YouTube channel, I have a job, I just don't have any interest in doing the typical college experience. I intend on getting my degree someday, but I think I'll do like online school or do some type of alternative thing. That could change, who knows? Maybe I'll end up going away to college, but I don't really see it in the near future. Kiss, Mary, Cliff, Jackson, Namjoon, and Wanho. <laughs> you don't get to cliff me this time or else. If you watched my last Q&A that I did, my friend Anthe asked me to do Kiss, Mary, Cliff for some of my favorite fictional characters, and this time she decided to do it with my K-pop biases. Namjoon is from BTS, Wanho is from Monster X, Jackson is from GOT7. I'm going to cliff Jackson. Hang on a moment until I explain, okay? Because I think Jackson would totally forgive me for cliffing him. He would be like, ha, lol, your turn, while laughing crazily. I can't cliff Wan Ho. I remember that video where he was crying for his mom. Oh, ma! When he had to go cliff. Oh, ma! What do you call it? Bungee jumping? I will not be the cause of Wan Ho crying. That's not happening in this lifetime. I would actually kiss Wan Ho and marry Namjoon. Namjoon is like my friend bias, but I would marry him because like marriages based on friendship would be the best anyways. And he likes books uh, and he's a deep thinker and he thinks about life in the same way that I do. Favorite song at the moment? I'm gonna say Island by Winner. That's probably my favorite song at the moment. I've been listening to it a lot. What makes you happy when you're having an off day? When I'm having a dark day or I just feel kind of low, I usually take more time to just care for myself, do face masks, take a bath, put on nice makeup, wear an outfit that I really like, which is stuff that I think we should do every day. Those little self-care things are really important to happiness. But when I'm having a down day, I just try and do it in a mindful way. Like I'll do everything more slowly 
think about what I'm doing as I'm doing it instead of like listening to music or texting people or I often listen to songs and write out lyrics in my journal which usually turns into writing poetry. I exercise if I'm feeling bad. If I run in the morning it starts my day off in a really positive way like I'll watch anime or I'll watch k-drama, draw, I'll doodle and put stickers in my journal. I don't know that kind of stuff really brightens my day. I often do not read when I'm feeling bad. Reading can be a form of escapism and escapism makes me feel much much worse if I'm having a bad day so I often avoid reading when I'm not feeling good and instead I try and focus on things that actually make me more aware of myself in a positive way. My reflection videos that I make, the reason I made those it came out of those days when I need to have more self-care and be more proactive about what I'm doing so the answer to this question is everything that I do in my reflection videos. <laughs> Favorite item of clothing let me go get my favorite item of clothing, is my combat boots. These were a present for Christmas last year. My mom just like dropped these on Christmas morning and I was like, holy. When I wear them, they just make me feel really badass. Like I could step on people. Another favorite item of clothing that I have though is this bomber jacket. It's like light blue corduroy and it has words on the back. I think this says more waves, please. Again, it just makes me feel really cool when I'm wearing it. The next question is, what is the best thing to have come from being on booktube? The absolute best thing that's come from being on booktube is the cliche answer. It's the people. It's you guys. It's the friends that I've made. It's the connection between people who all have a common interest. A perfect example of this is what happened last night. Last night I did an Instagram live just totally impromptu. It literally popped into my head and 10 minutes later I turned on the live thing. I had a really hard day yesterday and I got home and I was like I'm done with this day but I turned on the live and I started talking to you guys. My whole family joined the live. A bunch of my friends were in there. It boosted my energy so much. I felt so loved and known and supported there's something incredible about that like I love talking to you guys the messages and comments that I get from people saying that my videos calm you down or it helps with your anxiety are absolutely my favorite that is one of the best things I could possibly hear it's really hard to express how much it means to me that you guys have a positive experience with my videos I don't know does anybody understand what I'm talking about? If your favorite K-pop group appears one day in front of your house, please, please, please. Asking you for book recommendations, what book would you recommend to each of the members of that K-pop band? <laughs> this is an amazing question. So obviously I'm doing BTS. J-Hope, I think I would recommend him The Crossover by Quam Alexander. I don't know why, but it reminds me of J-Hope and I feel like he would like reading it. That book is verse, but it's about like basketball players. It's actually a middle grade novel. Suga, I would recommend The Foxhole Court. I feel like he just belongs in that book. Like people fan cast him as Andrew Minyard a lot. Like his solo mixtape, it just feels like The Foxhole Court. Jungkook, I'd probably recommend manga. I think he actually does read manga, so I don't know if he's already read these, but Bakuman or Tokyo Ghoul, I feel like he would like those. Taehyung, I would recommend The Raven Cycle. He would appreciate like the softness and the magicalness of those books. I could see him like relating to Noah. Jimin, I would recommend any of Benjamin Alir Sand's books. Again, I feel like Jimin belongs in those books. He's so soft and like tender and feeling. Either The Inexplicable Logic of My Life or Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. Either one, I'm pretty sure Jimin would like them. Jin, I actually have a hard time thinking of a book for Jin. Somebody comment what book they would recommend to Jin. Cause I'm gonna say like Lang Leave Poetry. I feel like maybe Jin would read nonfiction, which I don't read a lot of, so. Maybe like the Infernal Devices series or something like that. And I saved Namjoon for last because I have like a hundred book recommendations for Namjoon. Namjoon actually likes to read and I've gotten book recommendations from him as in like books that he talks about I've read and really enjoyed. Bel Canto, I'm pretty sure he would love that one. Bel Canto by Ann Patchett, The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan, The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis or Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis. I think Namjoon would love all of those books. 
And if he ever sees this video, I hope that he reads them. <laughs> the last question that I'm going to answer was actually a second part of an earlier question and I forgot to answer it earlier. It is, how do you relieve stress? What I actually wrote down for this question, to quote BTS, breathe, breathe, and dream a dream. So when I'm feeling stressed, I take deep breaths. And I remember that this world is a beautiful place and I was created to exist in it. And on that sappy note, that's going to be it for my Q&A. I know I didn't answer a lot of you guys' questions, but there were so many. If I didn't answer your question and you would like to know, please leave it down in the comments and I will try to answer as many as possible. I just want to thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers since that is the point of this whole video. Booktubing has become such a big part of my life in such a short time. I haven't even been doing this for a year, but it's become so important to me and the biggest part of that is you guys. Thank you so much one more time. I'll leave all my links down below if you want to see more pictures of sunflowers and stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a bright day and I will see you in my next video.